Did you know that September is International Update Your Resume Month? Well, it's a good reminder to have your resume ready to go whether or not you're looking for a job. And joining us this morning is career expert Ford Myers. He's the president of Career Potential, a consulting firm that has helped hundreds of people get their careers on track. Welcome, Ford. Good morning, Carolyn. Thanks for joining us. So who should have a resume? I mean, are you concerned, people who are concerned that they might get the boot or really anyone? Well, everyone should have a resume. Any professional, every working person should have a resume. In fact, it should also be updated on a consistent basis. It's the most important tool in marketing yourself out in the world of work. Even when you're fairly secure in your job and you're not actively looking? Great question, but yes, even when you're securely employed. We're going to get into specifics about what a resume should contain in a moment, but is there one general mistake that people tend to make? in resumes? Oh boy, there are so many. You know, they may have too much information, it may not be specific enough, it may not be attractive, it might be on the wrong color paper, the wrong type style, mm. coffee stains, dog-eared corners. It's very important that the resume look great and also read in a way that gets the best results. All right, so let's get specific now about what should go into a resume. The objective or the summary at the beginning, mm -hmm. how brief should that be? Well, the summary is really important. That's sort of like the headline in an advertisement. People will scan a resume very quickly. They want to zero in on the summary and it should really be no more than four to six targeted sentences. And when you say be brief, I remember a resume when I was writing one, we were always told it should not go over two pages. Mm -hmm. What if you have, though, a wealth of experience? Should, mm -hmm. Is that still a hard and fast rule? Generally, the resume should be no more than two pages. However, there are some cases... But you cases, can go over the, the first page. You're okay with two oh, pages. Oh, yes. Two pages is fine, and that's appropriate for a mm -hmm. professional. Occasionally, you can go to three pages if it's a very experienced person, but generally keep it to two pages. Okay, and the average time that an employer <laughs> spends on your resume? Question. You really want to know? 10, 15 seconds would be the first scan. So it's got to be very specific. It's got to be really relevant to your career goals. 10 seconds to decide your fate. Basically, That's yes. That's scary. You also say be specific. You, mm -hmm. What types of, uh, what, if you have to be brief, how specific can you get? Specific is about details. You really want to give details. In fact, if you can quantify your results, that would be fabulous. Quantify in terms of sales. What if you're not in that sort of profession? Oh, it could be projects, numbers of people, time frames. But don't give vague statements. Instead, get really right down to the details and try to be um, almost like measuring your performance. Okay. You also say be active. Don't use the passive voice. Right. It's like all about responsible for. That's right. It's the tone of voice. You want to sound like you're in the driver's seat, like you're the get it done person. So use strong action verbs to begin every sentence and every phrase. Now this one is tough. You say be selective mm -hmm. about what kind of information you put in a resume. We sometimes get resumes and people put all sorts of hobbies in, ballroom dancing, their <laughs> religious affiliations, their how many right. children they have. Does that information belong in a resume? No. When we say be specific, be selective, and select means only use information that's directly relevant to your long-term goal. If you had a part-time job in high school or if you do volunteer work on the side that's not related to your career, don't put it in. Leave only it put in things that are directly, specifically related to your career goal. But that sometimes could be a nice conversation starter if you had an unusual job. Oh, it can. But if you have only two pages, you don't have that much space to put all that other information. So you can talk about it. You could even have another addendum, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But keep the resume to two pages pages and be as specific as possible. Okay, and finally, and it's surprising that you even have to say this, but I guess you do, be honest. People lie in their resumes. Oh, you'd be surprised how widespread this is, but people need to avoid this temptation to stretch the truth. <laughs> okay, so be honest, never exaggerate. If people lie on their resume, unfortunately, it will catch up with them and they'll always lose in the end. Absolutely. And finally, you talked about the paper, that it's got to look good. You should have it professionally printed? Oh, yes. I really think that they should either work with a professional resume service or else look at mm -hmm. examples that they could follow, have it professionally copied, make sure it's on good quality paper with a conservative, traditional typeface. And you, people should look at examples. Like, for example, in the book I wrote, The Ultimate Career Guide, there are pages and pages of examples. And they're great to follow instead of trying to just make it up from scratch. All right, not the time to put the neon paper out, unless, no. of course, you're looking for a job in, in the art world. Right, exactly. All right, Ford Myers, thanks so much for Thank joining you, us. Thank you, Carolyn. And for more information, you can log on to WNBC.com and link to Ford Myers' site to help you manage your career and perfect your resume.